welcome to the show. Today we are finally going to be reviewing that stunning Breitling Transocean, the day date I unboxed. I think it was a few weeks ago. I do apologize. I'm running very behind in my videos, but I will get there eventually. I always do. A massive thank you to Saltzman's, Saltzman Watches of Rhode Island for uh, lending this watch in for review. They are, of course, an authorized dealer for Breitling. I actually use them to repair any watches I need repaired. Uh, outstanding, outstanding service. Uh, so if you are interested in purchasing a Breitling, they are my recommendation. So without further ado, oh, I almost forgot wristwatch check. Now I'm wearing a day date as we're discussing day dates. I've got it on a lovely crocodile strap. This is a genuine crocodile strap. I got, check out my uh, strap videos if you want to know more about that beautiful strap. Anyway, I, I'm already saying too much. Let's change perspectives and have a closer look. Today I'm finally reviewing the Breitling Transocean Day Date. This is the reference A45310. The particular version I'm looking at today is in steel, although you can get them in 18 karat red gold. They also come in a variety of dial colors. The one we're looking at today is the Mercury Silver. You can also get a black dial and I believe there's a limited edition with a really stunning uh, royal blue. They also offer these watches in a variety of different straps. I think there's a black one, there's also a blue strap and uh, the brown which is what we're looking at today. You can even get this watch on a stunning mesh bracelet which I really think uh, complements the vintage aesthetic that uh, these watches are based on. Now before we discuss this particular watch we should uh, rewind a bit. Now we've discussed the history of Breitling numerous times, a fantastic Swiss legendary luxury watchmaker, founded all the way back in 1884. Now they're still independent to this day, uh, although I, I hear there are negotiations. Uh, let's hope they stay that way because I, I absolutely adore this company. I'm a huge fan of the Navi Timer and I'm including the Navi Timer in this review because I just want to show you the, uh, the content contrast in what they offer uh, is just incredible. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Now the Transocean line was relaunched in 2007. The original Transoceans of 1958, they accompanied the boom in international and in intercontinental travel that was uh, going on. So it's named in tribute to that. And the style of the watch we're looking at today is very, very much an amalgamation, but yet updated very subtly uh, on particular references from the 1950s. Uh, the most immediately recognizable is probably the reference 2528, the uh, the Torah, and I'll include some pictures so you can see, and then the classic Transoceans, the vintage Transocean in the 1950s. So it's not based on just one particular watch. It takes style cues from here and there. Now, when we think of Breitling, and, and somebody posted a fantastic a question in the Facebook group not so long ago asking basically like a kind of word association game and the response pretty much was you know loud big watches flashy and also recently in the last decade Breitling's advertising has been of this sexy you know um pin-up girl type, obviously still with uh, heavy connotations to uh, flight watches, which is at the end of the day what they pretty much do. With modern Breitlings, we see a lot of very big, masculine, uh, quite macho watches. Uh, the Colt, for example, all very military inspired. The aviation watches are very busy. Uh, and of course, as we all know, aviation watches tend to be a lot larger. Also their high polishing kind of gives them uh, an aura of slight blinginess. Those are the typical connotations. We often overlook the Transocean line. The Transocean line really is just jam packed with quite restrained, quite classically styled, uh, and dare I say, understated, yes. And, and, and probably the most understated of all is the day day, which is what we're looking at today. Now, the first thing you'll notice is just how simple this watch is, but don't let that deceive you. There's actually quite a lot going on. Now, we'll get the basic uh, dimensions out of the way. First, we've got a diameter of 43 millimeters. We've got a height of about 
uh, 12 and a half there. Lag to lag, we're looking at 54 millimeters and lag width is 22. Very, very contemporary in scale. Not only is it updated in scale, it's also updated in all its material. We of course have sapphire glass and you'll see that blue hue as i move it around it has anti-reflective coating on both sides now it's a very subtle convex sapphire glass but the shape of it really is indicative of the kind of plastic and acrylic crystals you'll find in the vintage pieces if we look at the profile we see that vovolo effect going on beautiful and look at those lugs very curvaceous and the detail on them is quite subtle we see beveled edges tapering towards the end there the case is of course entirely polished with the exception of the stunning case back we see the classic tail wing logo uh, that you'll find in a lot of the older brightlings beautifully engraved we see that typical brightling scalloped edge on the screw down case back so entirely stainless steel like i mentioned before and this particular version as you can see comes on the strap I love the brightening straps. They're always so thick and substantial. We have the, a crocodile pattern on the, on the outside and then a calf skin, very soft, subtle on the inside. So uh, this of course is what is gonna be in contact with your wrist. And I've got to say, of all the Breitlings I've ever owned, straps are always impeccably done. Very substantial, very thick, uh, with contrast stitching, kind of matching the dial there. Nicely padded in the center. Then we have this fantastic deployment with the B logo there, that winged logo. And I've said this many times, it's my favorite uh, brand logo. It's just so cool, isn't it? You just flip it up like that, very easy to open, although, you know, securely, you know, it's not gonna open accidentally. But what I love about this strap, and I wish my, um, the strap that came on my, my Navi time I had this, there's, you'll notice there's no hole uh, there for the deployment to, uh, fasten into it's held in it's purely by resistance it just folds under very securely and what is great about this is that you can get the absolute perfect fit it doesn't ruin or bring extra wear to the strap very very nicely done and kind of keeps the clean aesthetic that this watch is all about and I'm sure if you're like me uh, for example even on a NATO strap I'm, I, I kind of want to go between the sizes, either one's too big or too small. With this system here, you never have to worry about getting the precise fit. Now, the best feature, without a doubt, about this watch is the dial. It's deceptively simple, but yet has quite a few little things going on here. We have the crosshairs that bring a really nice sense of balance. The crosshair is something really indicative of the 50s. It was popular with, you know, the Amiga Cosmics of the 60s, uh, the JLC Geophysic, of course. It's something that I think is making a bit of a comeback, but uh, very, very classic styling. Everything is beautifully proportioned. Nothing is too overbearing, and the placement of everything is just spot on. Plied B logo, again, paying homage to its heritage. Done beautifully in a yellow gold. Just a little flash of gold. That's really the only, even vaguely ostentatious quality of this watch. Everything else is so conservatively done. We have a very simple minute track running around the outside. Tiny little loom applied to the outer scale there. Now I'll show you a loom shot. The loom shot, it's not bad. We even have very subtle slithers of loom in those faceted baton hands. It's super luminova, works actually incredibly well considering its small size. Now they haven't applied the loom to the 12, nine and six, uh, all the three o'clock positions. That's how you get your bearings on the loom if you're reading this at night. However, it's not really a sports watch. You know, going back to the history of the Transocean, if I bring in my Navi timer, the Navi Timer is probably uh, the most iconic pilot's watch, or one of the most iconic pilot's watches of all time. Definitely in the top three. Now just look how, how busy that is. This is a real instrument. The rotating bezel, of course, the chronograph, uh, tons of scales. Very, very complicated, very busy. Now this is an aesthetic I really do like, although I'm not a pilot, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but the Transocean was still inspired by aviation. But this, let's let's think of it like this: if that is, if the Navi time is for the pilot, 
This is for the passenger sitting in first class. They don't need the scales. They're, they're not piloting their plane. All they need to know is the day and the date. And that is a wonderful complication to have, so useful. So we have the date at the three o'clock, quite small. And then we have the day at the 12, beautifully framed. Uh, and just look at the indices as well. I neglected to mention the hour markers, that diamond high, high polish, just glistens in the light. You can see the, the, the all the different faceted edges. I would have loved to see the date actually at the six o'clock, just the, in keeping with that symmetry. Although I think it works very, very well. The dial itself, uh, Breitling refers to it as mercury silver. Although to be honest, it's one of the most subtle silvers I have ever seen. It's, it's not sunburst, it's a kind of matted, although there is a slight grainy texture to it. Again, very strained, not, not flashy whatsoever. We have Transocean written towards the six o'clock position, Swiss made at the bottom, Breitling and 1884. They've kept it simple and I think it really, really works. The second hand, again, just a simple stick second hand. No fuss there. We don't see the uh, counterbalance that we see uh, on the Navi timer. The crown, as you can see, is signed again with the B logo. Beautifully done. There's no crown guards uh, and it's a non screw down crown, although it does have twin gaskets in there. The water resistance on this is 100 meters. So this is obviously an automatic watch and inside we have the Calibre 45, which is based on the ETA 2834-2. The power reserve is about 40 to 42 hours. It operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour. Uh, of course, we have the day-date complication. And as I pull out the crown, you'll see it's hackable. So this movement is the highest grade version of the Etel, the ETA. The age old argument of, oh, it's just another luxury watch using an, uh, an Etel movement. That's kind of null and void because Breitling, as you guys know, all of their movements are COSC certified. They have their own special uh, facilities at Le Champ de Fonds. It's decorated nicely. We have Côte de Genève, Pelage work, uh, a few blued screws. They've signed the rotor nicely. But what's most important, it is COSC certified fantastic accuracy there tried and tested relatively affordable to replace any parts or service there's nothing else to describe it better it is a workhorse gets the job done impeccably well so let's pop it on the wrist and see how it wears okay and there we go now as you guys know i have minute wrists <laughs> uh, this wears actually quite well quite comfortable mainly due to its uh, rather slender profile. The curved lugs definitely help it hug the wrist beautifully and just angle the, 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 that thick substantial strap very nicely. What I love about this is with this newer deployant, as we mentioned earlier, you can easily take it off, adjust it slightly and get the perfect fit. Now the weight is, I think about 109 grams, uh, so not that heavy. Um, although my only kind of critique is I, I do think the diameter is too big. Although it will please the wrists of any of you larger gentlemen, uh, for me it's just a little bit overbearing. It's quite ravishing um, in such an understated way. Uh, you, you don't really expect this from Breitling and I really wish uh, more people would know about the Transocean line because I think there's so much to offer. So for me, definitely too big and I think you'll agree. A bit of a shame because I really, really do like this watch. Although there are uh, different Transoceans in small, I think there's a 38. Uh, it, it doesn't, I'm not sure if it has the day-date complication. I think it has the date, in a slightly different setup. Very classy and quite elegant. If you can pull off the larger size, it will suit any occasion. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's slender enough to slip under the cuff, yet it has the uh, robustness and, uh, of a sports watch and the water resistance to deal with you jumping in a pool. It's almost the only watch you'd ever need um, if you've got the wrists for it. There you go. So let's take it back to the studio and discuss its positives and negatives. So, positives and negatives. Well, without a doubt, the quality is there. You really do feel like it's a luxury watch. Breitling have 
an amazing quality to their finish. Also, it's got to be said, it is a beautifully designed piece. It has, or it's captured, the charm uh, of its heritage. It evokes that feeling, and yet it's been updated beautifully. It's a very carefully nuanced design. I really do like it. Also, with this classic design, it's incredibly versatile. I can only imagine or begin to imagine just the sheer amount of straps uh, you can have uh, fun changing this watch with. And it's got to be said, something my little Henry can attest to, the day-to-day -day complication, it's an extremely practical and useful complication to have. I certainly, um, because I, I always forget what day of the week it is. Um, but yeah, beyond that, it, it's, it's very, very useful. Now, something I did neglect to mention, it does, of course, have manual wind. Uh, yeah, pretty standard, I know, with this uh, particular movement, but I should point it out. So, negatives. Well, you know what I'm going to say here. There's only really one big negative with this watch, and that is, of course, its size. I just wish they had another version in a 38mm size. Now, let me clear something up that I think people misunderstood in an earlier video. When I say bigger watches are less refined, I don't mean all big watches are less refined. What I mean is, for example, if I was to wear this piece, it would look less refined on me. Watches have to fit your scale, okay? If you've got massive wrists, first of all, I'm jealous, but if you do have huge wrists and this fits you perfectly fine, that's not unrefined. What I'm saying is that you know, guys like me with small wrists wearing big watches. It looks ridiculous, it looks clumsy, and yes, unrefined. It makes me appreciate my little Henry a little bit more, and obviously it saves me money because I'm not gonna uh, buy this watch. But yeah, that's really the only negative. I struggle to think of anything else. Anyway guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, questions, opinions, all the rest of it down in the comments below, especially if you own this watch. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it. So thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.